So today we're going to learn the third and final method of solving linear systems. It's called elimination. Um, so that's our plan for today. And we're going to start out sort of the same way where I'm going to ask you to take this system and use substitution. So if you go back to substitution, remember the first verb would be to solve. So you're going to have to pick a variable and solve for that variable in one of the equations. Then you'll substitute to get one of the um, coordinates. And then you'll substitute that value in to get the other coordinate. And then you will check it. So I'm going to stop the video here. And you're going to solve this one using substitution. We'll come back. We'll go over it and then talk about maybe we could do this a different way. So if I take a look at this one, let's start. What did I choose to do? Now, you didn't have to go my way, but I'm taking the bottom one and going to solve it for y. First thing I did was subtract 5x, and now I'm going to divide everybody by 8, and I have solved the second red equation for y. I'm now going to substitute it back into the blue one for the y. And we can see this is just starting to turn into a mess. We're going to do the distributive property. Um, thank goodness when I do the distributive property, I do clear the fractions here. But, you know, a lot of room for error here. But a negative times a negative is a positive. And don't forget the negative times the positive is a negative. Like terms, we're going to combine those. And now we're down to our two-step equation. We're going to add 48 to both sides, and we're going to divide by 11. Did you get an x-coordinate of 8? Now, if you didn't, you know, you're off at this point. I'm now going to substitute again, and I'm going to put the 8 in right here because that looks like an easy spot to do it. Um, I totally lied. <laughs> I thought I was going to put it in there. Actually, put it up in the original um, and did the algebra there to get the y equals 1. So there is my answer. I'm going to check it. And I actually checked it in both. Um, I needed to check it in the blue one, but I checked it in both. And there is all the work to get the solution to this system, which is 8 comma 1. We got there. Took a bit of time. So I'm going to show you a third method. When you have a system that kind of doesn't have a nice variable to solve for, in other words, None of the variables have a coefficient of 1 or negative 1. Um, there is a third method. So on this system, I would not have used substitution. So I'm going to teach you about elimination right now. I'm actually just going to do this one using elimination. And then I'll go through the new verbs and how to, to work um, a system using elimination. Um, so the first thing we'll be talking about arranging, but knowing, notice that the x terms are on top of each other, the y terms are on each up, top of each other, the equals and the constants. The second thing we look for is coefficients to be the same, and if they're off by a sign, you can actually just add down right now. So the 6x plus the 5x, the negative 8y plus the 8y, and the 40 plus the 48 and you end up with this equation that looks familiar. We divide both sides by 11, and we've already got the x-coordinate. So basically what elimination does is sets up the system so that when you, and I like to add, you can also do subtraction, but people do better with adding. Uh, when you add, you end up eliminating one of the variables. Uh, substitution does that. We've seen that to get it to one variable. This does it quite quickly. And now once I'm here, I'm kind of back to the idea that I'm going to have to substitute and check. So I do substitute back in. This is kind of looking familiar what I did in substitution. I get the Y coordinate and boom, I am set. And I'm not going to do the check again because we already did the check. The check would be the same. So it's really that first step, um, really making that incredibly easy. But look at the work here compared to what we had to do with substitution. So when do I use this? Again, when there is not a nice coefficient of 1 in front of any of the uh, variables. So elimination is a method of solving equations where a new equation is obtained by adding. You can subtract one of the other equations or a multiple to the other equation. So an example, uh, we're going to use elimination to solve this system. So I'm going to walk through now. Now this one actually would be uh, really nice. To do substitution, I mean, we could solve for one of these x's, but I'm going to use elimination. 
So when we're solving this system, here come the new verbs for elimination. And the first verb is to arrange. And that means to make sure that the Ys are on top of each other, the uh, Xs are on top, the equals and the constants. So basically what you're doing is the commutative property, or you might be uh, moving terms across the equals by doing opposite operations. So in here, I really just have to flip around too. So if I take this top equation and commute the three Y and the X, just change the order, I now have the two equations arranged. Y is on top of each other, X is on top of each other, equals and constants. The second step, um, which is sometimes necessary, is you might have to multiply one or both of the equations by a number to obtain coefficients that are opposites for one of the variables. So like 3y and negative 3y are already opposites. See that? So because they are the same number and off by a sign, I do not need to multiply. We're ready to go. All right, the next verb is to add, we'll talk about the fact that you, you know, you can subtract by having them be the same, but it really, really benefits students who are learning this to have them off and to add. You guys add better than you subtract. So um, now because the y's have coefficients that are the same, but off by the sign, oh, by the way, opposites, when we add 3y and negative 3y, that becomes zero. It eliminates the y x plus x is 2x, we bring down the equals, and 12 plus 30 is 42. We have a one-step equation, divide by 2, boom, our x co um, coordinate is 21. Now it's going to feel like substitution, where that second thing you have to do is to substitute. Uh, this is the same, so I'm going to need to put x equals 21 into one of the two equations. So remember the original equations. And so you're going to notice I'm putting it in right up here. So 21 plus 3y equals 12, right? And that's where this came from. This is now a two-step equation. I'm going to subtract the 21, divide by 3, and my um, y coordinate is negative 3, and here is my solution. To check it, I need to check it since I used the top equation. I really need to only check it in that negative 3y plus x equals 30 equation, which is the bottom one. I checked it in both, but um, if you had only done this check, you adequately um, checked it. And that's how we do elimination. Okay, so I'm going to walk through some with you. Um, and then um, as we go, it'll get a little bit more complicated. And then as always, we will end with the weirdos. So the first thing I look at at this system, if I want to use elimination, is that I need to arrange it because I have an X on top of a Y. So I need to commute one of these two. And you'll notice that I did it. It was easiest on the bottom. So I just switched the order of the Y and the 2X. I commuted those. By doing that, I have arranged where I have the X's on top of each other, the Y's, the equals, and then the constants. Now I look at my variable. The 2 and the 3 isn't going to help me, but I am already ready to go because this has a negative 1 and this has a 1 coefficient. They're opposites off by a sign there. So if I add down, I'm going to eliminate the Y's. So I take 3x plus 2x, add it. Negative y plus y will make a 0. And 21 plus 4 will make a 25. And look at that. It's a one-step equation, divide by y, and I've already got the x coordinate. I'm now going to substitute. So you're going to put that x equals 5 in either the top or the bottom equation. I chose to put it in the bottom. I'm going to take 2 times 5. I get 10. Subtract 10 from both sides, and my y-coordinate is negative 6. So I believe that my solution, where these two lines meet, if I was to graph them, would be at the point 5, comma, negative 6. I need to check it. Notice that I used the bottom equation in the system. I must check it in the top. So that's why here I'm actually only doing one check to remind you that that is legitimate. If you don't understand that, you must check it in both. Because if you check it in the wrong one and made a mistake, in the one you already used, you won't catch it. So now it's 3 times the x-coordinate minus the y-coordinate. So be careful. There should be a minus a negative here, which will become a plus. And 15 plus 6 is 21. And I have the right solution. How cool is that? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to ask you on number three is where do we need to start? So remember that the first verb is to arrange. Now, you 
might be, you know, kind of changing that, uh, you know, doing it a little bit differently as we go through. And, and there are more than one ways to get to the right solution here. So I chose to take that second one and, or, you know, and arrange it. So I put that negative X. Remember, if the sign of the variables in front, the sign of the term. So when I pick this up, or you could make this plus a negative, you'd see it that way. And I'm switching the order on commuting. Now, the problem here is that I do not, I do not have um, a variable with a coefficient that are off by a sign. So adding right now would not eliminate. We'd have 5x plus 2y equals 5. I didn't eliminate a variable. So you have a choice right now. Because these guys both have a 1, you could choose to subtract top minus the bottom. But people, students new to this, will often make a mistake. And instead of realizing that this is 6x minus a negative x, they'll just come down here and put 5x. So I recommend, instead of subtracting, that you actually would multiply by negative 1, one of the equations. So either pick the pink or the green and multiply all the way through by negative 1. As long as you multiply every term, it is the same equation. It's just a different look to it. And then you will have them off by a sign. So in other words, I kept the top one the same, the pink one. But notice I'm going to multiply the green, everybody by negative 1. And when I do that, then I will be ready to eliminate by adding. So the Negative times a negative is a positive x. Negative times a positive is a negative y. And don't forget to multiply every term, including that negative 8. And now this equation, the green one, is the same equation, just written a different way. So now notice that the y's have a coefficient of positive, the invisible one, and negative the invisible one, so that when I add down, I will eliminate the y's because this will become a zero pair. So 6x plus 1x is 7x, and 13 plus 8 is 21. So back here, if you had taken 6x minus a negative x, that would be 7x. y minus y would give you the 0. And 13 minus a negative 8 would be 13 plus 8, which is 21. So you could have subtracted here. But man, I can't tell you how many kids will put like 5x here and 5, and that's wrong. It's minus a negative. Okay, now I divide both sides by 7, and I have my x-coordinate. Whoops. So what is the next step to do? What do I need to do next? So the next step would be to take this x equals 3 and to substitute into one of the equations for x and solve it for y. So where have I done that? Um, I decided to do it right here. I'm going the easy route right now and taking y minus 3 you know, equaling negative 8. Now I'm going to add 3 because it's a one-step equation, and I'm thinking my y-coordinate is negative 5. I'm thinking this is my solution. Which equation do I have to check it in right now? So because I used the green equation to get this y-coordinate, I have to check it in the pink one. Um, I checked it in both. It is always an option to do, but you really only had to check it in the pink one. And you'll notice that I put in the x-coordinate, I put in the y-coordinate, did the math, it worked. When you go to do it in this one, you'll feel like you're doing the same kind of math again. All right. So now let's take a look at another example before we um, head on to the uh, weirdos here. So the first thing, my first verb would be to arrange. I'm a happy camper right now because... This is already arranged. I have the x's on top of each other, the y's, the equals, the constants. Okay. Now the problem is if I look in front of my uh, variables here, I don't have the same number off by a sign. So I'm now going to bring in my other ver you know, verb like we did last time by multiplying by negative 1. You don't have to multiply by negative 1. As long as you multiply every term in an equation by the same number, it's the same equation just looking different. So I'm asking you right now, what would be a number that I could multiply one of the equations by and be ready to eliminate? So what my eye sees right away is that if I had a negative 40 here, these would eliminate. 
how do I get the negative 40 here? I'd have to multiply the top equation every term by four, and I'd be ready to go. So as you see, I did that. I multiplied the top by the four, and I'm ready to go. How about if you finish this one and get the x coordinate? Okay, let's see how you did. So I'm going to add down, and when I add down, I'm going to eliminate the y and have 16x equals negative 80. Divide both by 16, both sides, and you should have gotten x equals negative 5. Okay, your turn. Find the y coordinate. So you had a choice. You need to put that negative 5 into one of the original equations. I chose to put it in the top one, so if you did that, your work will match mine. If you put it in the bottom one, you should still get the same answer. So I got negative 15 minus 10y. I'm going to add 15 to both sides, divide by negative 10, and you should get y equals 1. Now, again, if you used the bottom equation, you should still get that y equals 1. There's more than one way to get to the solution. So I believe my solution is negative 5, 1. In my case, since I use the top equation, I have to check it in the bottom. So I'm putting my x of negative 5 and my y of 1. I'm going to multiply and get negative 20 plus 40. And right there, I'm a happy girl. I have the right answer. So in this particular case, we only had to change one equation. All right. Let's keep doing our elimination. It's not so bad. Um, so just know that sometimes you have to multiply both equations um, by a number. So let's just take a look, though, and we'll, we'll practice more when you come into class. But, you know, the question comes up again as to what do I do or how do I know without graphing them if they're parallel or the same line? How do I know if there's no solution or infinitely many? So here I'm kind of looking at these two equations. I'm like, oh, cool. Hey, it's all, you know, they're lined up. But realize in this particular case that they do not have the same coefficient. So I chose to take the top one and multiply it. You can do a single equation here and multiply it by 3. So times 3, times 3, and times 3. Actually, I'm sorry, I multiplied by negative 3. Otherwise, they would have had the same sign. So times negative 3 would give me a, six, a negative 6k. A negative times a negative give me a positive 9c and a positive times the negative three. So I'm taking the top and multiplying it by negative three, and this is my new equation for that same line, and I left the guy below the same. At this point in time, when I add down, I actually eliminate both variables because I get a zero here and a zero there. On the other side, I get negative nine, and this is the weird happenings. Is zero equal to negative nine? No. So what is the case here? Of course, you're getting really familiar with these. This would be our no solution. And if you graph these, the lines would be parallel. Okay, so I got a mess happening over here. So the first thing I need to do is to arrange. And I chose to leave that top one and move that y term to the other side by adding 12y. Okay, so now if you look here, um, you know, what could I do to kind of, you know, get these to have be off by a sign? And I'm looking right here, right? I need to multiply the top equation by negative 3. When I multiply the top equation by negative 3, then I should have two equations that will be ready to eliminate. So that is, whoops, sorry, got off my mouse there. I multiply the top one by negative 3. There's the bottom one. Again, notice that when I add down, I'm going to eliminate both equations. But this time, negative 3 plus 3 will put a 0 on the other side. And here is our infinitely many. Oh, by the way, these are the same line. So the one thing that we didn't get to see here today that we're going to work on in class, but I just want you to be aware, is sometimes you have to multiply both. I'm going to go back to this one both equations. So just look at the x terms. And, you know, um, I could have, in this case, made the coefficients be 12 and negative 12. I could have multiplied the top equation by 4, let's say, and I could have multiplied the bottom equation by negative 3. If I multiply the top one by 4, that would put a 12x here. And if I multiply the bottom one here, 
by negative three, that would put the negative 12x here. So you can not just multiply one equation, you could multiply both by a number. Don't forget when you do that, however, you have to multiply every term on the left and the right to keep the equation as being the same equation. You're basically just giving it um, a different name. So realize that it's not, you. sometimes you might not just be able to multiply one by a number, you might have to multiply both. And here's an example of that. So now what we're gonna do is give you a chance to kind of practice eliminating. Um, and today we might start with some of the simpler ones. We'll see how you do. And then when we come to class, we will do some practicing together. But there are three ways that you can solve a system of linear equations. You can do it by graphing, which is great. However, if the point is not in the crosshairs, it's a disaster. The second one is substitution. Substitution is great if you have a variable that has a coefficient of one and you can solve for that. But if you don't, it can be a disaster. And elimination actually works in all cases, but it is an especial helpful one when you have coefficients where none of them are, are one. So today we learned the third and final way of solving a system. Once we get through practicing elimination, we need to talk about where do we use this stuff. So we'll be heading to our word problems. So I hope you have fun with elimination. I'll see you soon, guys. Have a great day.